Let's look at Psalm 133. Hallelujah. Psalm 133. I love the scripture. The Bible said, Behold, it's a kind of somebody imagining something big. How good and pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity? Unity is sweet. Unity attracts the blessings of God. I want to talk briefly to married people today. How good and pleasant is it when family dwells together in unity? The opposite is in Genesis chapter 6. How bad and terrible is it <laughs> when family disintegrates? But I just want to read some the, uh, Genesis chapter 6. How God sees the world, it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of their daughters were born to them. Why daughters? <laughs> then the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives. That's Nephilim. But that's the way I'm going to today. Fallen angels, they call them. There were angels that fell with Lucifer. Revelation chapter 12. One told, but there were angels that fell also because they were lost in after beautiful women on earth. Those ones, Jude chapter 1 says, angels that did not keep their former estate are in chains waiting for the day. So as we are on earth, the one told that fell with Lucifer are ravaging the earth with evil, but there's another class of angels that are under chains, under the earth, yet to be released until after the rapture. But again, that's where we are going. Verse 3. My spirit shall no more strive with man, God said. Next verse. I want to remind you that God looked at the old earth and it was filled with violence. And God saw the wickedness of man that was great upon the earth. Every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil. That's serious. I know there are certain people like that. When they sit down, they imagine it's evil. Now, it's, it becomes a serious tragedy when marriage gets to a place where a man thinks evil towards his wife and the wife thinks evil towards the man. I learned of a man that went on celebration when his wife died. Now, finally, he ordered from wine and pizza. <laughs> Next verse, verse 6. Verse 6. It repented the Lord that he made man on the earth. You can have your seat. There is just one aspect that I want to look at. I hope it won't take me time today. It will bless even those who are nobody. Now, listen to me very well. I sit in my office from time to time. People come to talk to me. I read things on the internet. I get questions and I get things. If I'm to rave, the reason for breakups and unhappiness in marriages, personally, I'm going to put finance, maybe 30, 40%. I'm going to put in-laws, maybe about 60%. In-laws. Mother-in-law, father-in-law, daughter-in-law, devil-in-law. <laughs> People forget that you don't marry a person, you marry a family. To think that you are going to marry somebody is an illusion. You are going to marry the person and marry the family. And at times... The scenario that will play out in your marriage is coming from where the person is coming from. What I want to share briefly is how to maintain a healthy balance. Because on one side, in law shouldn't be too involved. On the other side, you cannot fence them off. I get what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Marriage begins to actually degenerate when a person feels that you don't like his people or her people. How many times have I heard that? Listen to me very well, especially ladies who are not married there. To think that you marry a man and block his mother and everybody, you are deceiving yourself or you are looking for trouble or you are Jezebel. They are not supposed to come in and run your home. Yes, 
But you are also, you should know that the person you are getting married to is from. I remember when a lady was talking to me, he can also pain a woman. When the man's money, but the man's mother comes to stay with them, the man's, and she tolerates. Anytime she mentions that let's visit my own people, the man doesn't want to go. All of you men, please, it is, see, we cannot demonstrate selfishness in marriage. When you are talking to your siblings, you are laughing. When he says that, oh, this is my brother's uh, birthday, can you just say hi to my brother? You put up a reaction. So what does it mean of two becoming one? You are happy when it's about your siblings. Once it's about his own, there is a reaction you put up. Why? Not learning wisdom in handling in-laws. You will not know how much their opinion will count until the problem starts. That's why if you are married, you are already married. You have to love the people. You might not be so, so close to them. But you must do things that will convince the other person that you love his or her family. You know, if I stop here, I'll pass the message across. I've listened to too many times where do you know how many husband and wife that the wife is fully persuaded that the man does not actually love her people. And how many women are very sure that the guy doesn't love. So this mother comes to stay. Everybody enjoys it. Then his own mother or her own mother comes and then problem starts. And this enters into people's finances. So you can buy things for this one. But when it comes to this one, you begin to look like you are under duress. And two are supposed to be one. Most of the breakups that I've seen, oh, my brother came visiting. She said this to my brother. My brother went to tell my mom. And from that day, the body will never balance again. Except they have learned the law of forgiveness and let things go. I do know that there are in-laws that are, sincerely speaking, they are terrible. When they come around, there is a problem. I have spoken to men many times, because it's actually common the other way around. You know, there are women that, uh, when they give birth to a son, maybe they suffer the law because of that boy. Maybe the father of the boy left on time. Unfortunately, women I don't know that you are programming the next generation for what you went through also. They dealt with you. They left you alone. You raised your kids alone. Now you are beginning to deal with the kid's wife also. Because you still want your children. Your son is 32. You still want him. You still want him. So you converse with him day and night. You come to their house as if he's still living with you. And any reaction from the wife, you begin a fight. You are actually destroying the marriage. This kind of message is because you have to go both sides. Because it's the two sides of the problem they are coming from. Because I honor all mothers, but sincerely, some go beyond their bounds in their interference when it comes to. When you have entitlement mentality, it's not a good thing. It is my son's house. So I do anything I want in the house. It is not your son's house. It is his house and a house. Honestly speaking, my wife is saying, I thank God for my mom. And I've said that for my father. If they come to Lagos, that is even if they stop to check you. If they check at all, they stop briefly and they go. God forbid, if we quarrel, they will support her. When you are married in my house, they tell you that, see, there's no space for you coming back to say, we will now take your side against your wife or against your husband. It doesn't work. I have two sisters, younger sisters. The same thing my father, my father told the two of them. To think that one day I will stand against your husband because of you, forget about it. If this man you want to marry, I welcome the two of you. So no support for one against another one. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It, it cannot happen. The havoc that in-laws have created. And at times in a Christian home, what's First Peter 3, 7? I want to show you how serious this matter can be. This is why you should pay attention to these things. And when you have sons, leave them alone. 
<laughs> so I joined their wife. So. <laughs> Likewise, you husbands, God is always talking more to men. Dwell with them according to knowledge. Knowledge of what you want, have a knowledge. And that's why I'm sharing this. Giving honor to your wife as unto a weaker vessel has been heirs together of the grace of, of life. Last part is what I'm looking at. That your prayers. I remember I said, when I first read this, I first thought that maybe I should not marry. Because that means my prayer in itself may, cannot be in that. But there is a way I join a woman while I will come. Why? Things that can bless, they can also be a source of cause. And I've said this before that the more of a problem a thing can solve, the more a problem it can create also. And I like giving this example when I'm joining people. If you are to trek from here to London, let's say no terrorists on the way, nothing. It will take you only God knows, maybe a year, maybe two years, I don't know. But here is the point. You will not likely have a fatal accident walking. I said you sleepwalk. But normally when you walk, walking around your environment, the chances of accidents are very slim. Now, if you take a bike to London, you will appear faster, you will get there faster than somebody walking. You might have accidents on the bike. But you see, bike accidents cannot be as severe if you enter a plane. Plane will get to London in six hours. But if a plane crashes, so if you are walking and you fall down, you get up again, you don't need hospital. If a car down, you fall from the car, you might need hospital. If it is the plane, there's no remedy. The one that gets you to your destination fastest is also the one that you must not make mistake with. Marriage is built on relationships. Relationships are all blessings in life. They come through relationship. In Luke chapter, in, uh, uh, in Exodus chapter, I think, what God Moses spent 40 nights and 40 days on the mountain. What he did not know, it was his father-in-law that taught him. Jethro came and he saw how Moses was canceling from morning to night. I wonder why 40 days of Moses' prayer did not get into that. You know what God is showing there? He's showing us something. There is a wisdom you will learn from your in-laws. The reason why there is, uh, uh, the case of many in-laws is more, more tragedy and everything Anything God wants to bless you through, Satan will pervert it if you allow it. Or if you wrongly approach it, Satan will pervert it. He attacks what will be a source of blessing. Jethro told Moses that he just sat down and he looked. He said, come my son. Ah, no. He said, if you continue like this, you will die before your time. He said, select, hundred, select men who are faithful. Let them determine all the cases. Anyone that is very hard is the only one they will bring to you. You know what? When Jethro said so, then God appeared to Moses and said, what Jethro said, do. Why didn't God say that before? Can there be something that your in-laws can contribute to your life? If you are patient, if you are kind, and you are open. Maybe one of the things people don't know is that when people are saying they want to get married, they are looking at the romance aspect. Marriage is responsibility. I told the single this morning, Accept it and be free. It's responsibility. That's why looking at the shape of a woman to the time you marry, you saw that shape will be shapeless. By the time you see religious in life, what is shape? You can't win a woman's heart convincingly if you have not touched her family. You understand? There are days, sincerely, you want to hold premiership, but the Lord demands that you follow her to go and greet her mom. Follow her to this place. Your mind is on your work, your project, but she wants you to say hi to her brother. I know what, I'm not being one-sided. You as a woman, you must be like that also. So the guy greets all your family on their birthday, greets them very well. When his own brother is doing birthday, you begin to throw, try to jump, I'm telling you. The face you wear, when he mentions his family, it's like, look, look, I don't want that. If you are not ready for that, don't marry. And I see, honestly speaking, it is people like us pastors who can help you if you are married to a man whose mother is troublesome. What are you going to do? You are already married. Actually, if it's the time that is attached to his mom, any attempt you make can end that marriage. Except you bring him to HOD. 
and we talk. So the guy begins to think that there is a problem with what I'm doing, truly. I tell the other, you can't be doing this. I told you before of a mother going to, uh, uh, I mean, still saying that she will be the one cooking for the son. I told her that there is a kind of beans he eats that nobody can cook. I don't know whether the beans came from heaven or what, that nobody can cook. I know he was older. I had to summon courage. I said, excuse me, sir, this is wrong. I said, tell mommy that. Mommy, thank you for your love and everything. What's supposed to be born? See, this can't be. I have eaten the beans enough under you. Old beans have passed away. Let this new beans. And the thing was spending. The guy didn't see anything wrong. Until the wife dragged him to home and see me. He, he didn't. He just said, ah, but she cooked other type of food now. Why is that? It's beans that she's saying. Uh, and that that beans same. I only eat once in two weeks. I said, even if you eat it once in a year. This is the woman that should begin to cook it now. Why don't mommy call this girl to show her whatever mystery that is behind that beast? Whatever mystery. Or is it something that nobody can learn? <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I have shared with men here before. It's your duty to protect your mom, your dad, and your wife. You know that your mom can be quite overbearing. You yourself, you know. You are the one that should protect them from clashing. When mommy says she's coming, find a way. Now mommy knows we will come and see you. And go see her, give her a gift, play with her and go. So that at a point, when she knows that you love her but that you don't want clash, she will understand. But you are the one taking side with one against another. Look, the truth of the matter is this. This is how this thing gets deep. Even when your mom is wrong, if you make her sorrowful, it might affect you in life. If she perceives what you are trying to do as now you are okay financially, now you marry the wife and you don't want to see her face again, I think that's not what you are trying to do. But if you don't find a way to pacify and let her know, and she begins to weep in her room on you and saying things, it might find a way to affect you. So this is why the Bible says that dwell with them. you need that understanding of what do, how do I undo these people. At the same time, if your wife also is sad, she is the one you have a covenant with. That also will affect you. Now think of two troublemakers. That the wife is tough, the mother is tough, and you are in between. <laughs> and then I hope it's not two people crying against you before God. Even everyone say that, ah, ah, now you, ah, ah. <laughs> why is your life like this? <laughs> are, you, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. See, this is why when you follow a guy home to visit his people, if you know you don't like them, that might be a warning sign that stay away from that marriage if you are not yet married. But that you say, I don't like the family, but I just like him. It's a problem. If you are lucky, it might be the type that is not so, so, so much into family. But you see, however people claim that they are not much into family, it's family that will still bury the person. No. Just understand that you might just be shocked how events will play out later. It is true. Have you ever asked yourself a question? No, there are no meaningless details in the Bible. Why did Matthew 8, Matthew 8, I think verse 30, why did he tell us that Jesus went into Peter's house and healed Peter's mother-in-law? I just told you about Moses' father-in-law now. That means the patriarch treated their in-laws very well. Peter's mother-in-law was sick. She didn't go anywhere. She came to Peter's house. And Jesus met her there and healed her. And when Jesus was on his way to the cross, he made sure that he gave his mom somebody to help. He said, John, look at your mom. He gave her. The Lord believes so much in relationship and Satan fights relationship so much. Somebody told me one day, a very wealthy and generous man. They were cousins. I don't talk to him for, for years. I was looking at the person, die in your poverty. You know, when you are poor and you are proud, it's a very bad combination. <laughs> Rich people can afford to be proud. You are nothing and you are proud. So, proud of, about, about what? And some even say, we know we don't have anything, but we have our pride. <laughs> it's a terrible thing to have. 
<laughs> it does not translate into anything. <laughs> the Bible said the rich answers roughly. The proud, people can be proud when they are, but if you are broke, don't be proud. <laughs> if I mention it, some of you will get it. He's a blessed man that he works in a right company now. You, you, you remember our friend when we were squatting in Tony. I don't want to say we are the supermarket, the biggest market in Antony. So we are we are public. I won't mention it's still the biggest right now. If you know Antony, you will know that somewhere this way there's a big shopping mall owned by one man from Anambra. Fantastic man. He started with a kiosk on the same streets. And by the time we're moving in, two flats on top, he rented the two down and linked them together to form one main building. And that was more. By the time I was moving out of Antony, the guy had bought like three buildings on the same streets, it, it, it broke them down and converted to a big shopping mall in Antony. And you know what? You will never know except they tell that this is the man. When I was staying on top, I was caught with somebody that was not by there. So I came down, asked my friend, who is one of this supermarket? Because one day we sat outside. We were broke. So out of joblessness, we just sat outside calculating how much the man would have made in two hours. We just sat outside. <laughs> Because we're looking at cars coming in, so we entered, you know, and I saw that he was making millions every hour. And Shani saw the women will come from all over, they'll be pushing the trolley, put down, so we stood behind them. We didn't want to buy anything. Eventually, we bought one Coke and one Pepsi. We stood behind the people buying, and we're calculating, and then just see 250k, 200, in one hour. 250k, eight times, nine times, 50k, 70, that's people every time. It used to cause traffic there. And I said, who is owner? He said, that's the man now. Guess what the man doing? He was actually carrying boxes of Indomie on his head. He said, the guy walked with all his workers every time. And the guy told me, he said, we are both Yoruba. He said, he said you Yoruba. If we're to be a Yoruba man, he will wear a bad down and sit down. You will know that that's the owner. He said, he said, that's why. So now, in his generosity, he gave our landlady who was staying at the back, he bought a big gen and put the landlady on it because it was too big. Then put the flag beside us on it. And I told my friend I was cutting with. My friend he said that he, he has not put me, he's expecting me to come and tell him. I said, You are a fool. <laughs> no, no, he should come and beg you to. Because of his part, he was the owner of the and my friend was, I was just cutting there. We suffered for months of no light. And he will pass and not greet the man. I thought I said. I give the time. Oh God. I said, don't, don't be poor and arrogant. Look at your life. They will take light. All the flats will have lights. Powered by this man. We will carry bench and sit outside the balcony. <laughs> and he was still talking about it. That he's expecting me. I know he wants to come and beg him. I said, if I happen to be the one, I will beg free of charge. <laughs> Number one, we are singles, we are not married. What is the what is the ego about? <laughs> Pride is terrible. <laughs> I know the man being gentle. Maybe the man felt that we didn't want it and he never brought up the issue. But every time I greeted him, he responded very well. What they asked me, are you the one living up there? I said, I'm squatting with somebody there. He just said, well, how are you doing? And he went. And one day we went to buy, so he was around and he reduced the price for us. And I told my father, swallow your pride. Just walk up to this man and say that, sir, oh, God, you have not put us, oh. How do you put you? <laughs> ah, he, he said... <laughs> <laughs> Why Peter's mother-in-law? Why Jethro? As a woman, the home truly belongs to you. But are you ready to create peace in that place? If your husband's brother stops by, how do you welcome them? You begin to show a reaction that they are coming to actually, even though they are not even staying, they are just there for a short time. Yet you know that there's no adult in Nigeria that cannot read body language. The state of your heart has a way of showing, no matter how you pretend about it. So why are you just angry when they come around? If they are troublemakers, find a way within that short time to let there be peace. After a while, as you pray and you talk with your husband, he will know, I'm not denying the fact that some in-laws, they create problems. A lady told me they just got a mini flat. And the boy's mother said that, you know, as she paid for the mini flat, but she didn't want to tell them. You know, there are good women. She just felt that 
this guy is hard working. They didn't pay the guy for like some months. I told the guy, you know, don't worry. I know that you really want to drop this money, but take. And the guy paid for the house. And then the moment they got the house, mini flats. The mother of the guy sent two of the brother from Billy. Who might be staying with them? And she told the guy. So she came to me. And I look at the same guy that said, did you tell your mom that we only have one room? These boys will sleep at the city now. Worst of it, they will finish eating and dump the plates in the kitchen. No, one guy told me one day, he said, can you imagine, pastor, I dropped the plate, she expected me to wash. Honestly, God saved me that my flesh didn't make me. Well, it was a young man. I said, this one, is supposed to take belts. So I asked, I said, sorry, so who should watch you? My question sh- shocked him. He said, that's so why I want to talk to my brother. They will say they are talking in the night. I said, you don't understand. You have become a foreigner in the house. What you do is now, you don't just single your brother out. Love the two of them. Respect the two of them. If you respect this man the way you respect your husband, she will help you get anything from your husband. Simple wisdom. When I was serving in Abuja, I used to go visit my brother in Kaduna. I used to go visit my brother in Abuja. You will think that I was actually the wife's younger brother. Me and I will talk in the kitchen. I will join now to be cooking. We'll talk. They are probably watching now. They're in London, UK now. We'll talk, 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 talk. I told my friend, the reason why I go to that house is because I am close to his wife, even though I'm very close to my brother also. Many times I follow her to go and grind pepper in markets. As a copper, she'll just say, ah, Pastor, brother, how are you? So where are you going to? He said, ah, I want to go to market. Said, Let me just escort you now. And we will gist and gist. We'll talk Bible, talk about stories and everything. So every time I showed up, maybe once in a month in Abuja, she was happy. She was happy. Because I hurt very well. <laughs> they would have starved us well in Kaduna. So she didn't mind. I was always the only one going for her too. She would serve everybody. I would just go to the kitchen. And she, but see, we were flowing. <laughs> I was useful. <laughs> <laughs> She, she knew that if she wanted to do something and nobody wanted to go with her, I was ready. So, I mean, like that, it, it should be. You can actually do this. You can actually do this. Glory to God. Out of all the three guys that my mom gave birth to, there's none. My two elder brothers are also married. There's none of us that our wives don't look forward to my mom coming if she wants to come. She will never disturb you. She will never eat anything other than what you are eating. I told my friend one that, do you know that my mom retired the chief uh, magistrate of high court of me? She never believed. But my mom will to let you know that she can drive. She will just sit down there. My daughter asked my mom one time, what do you want to watch? She said, no, what are you guys planning to watch? That's what I want to watch. She will never go to kitchen or the authorizer. My wife is saying she will never. She's going to abide by all your rules in the house. All your rules. Everybody went and will let mommy alone at home. Mommy did not change channels. Everybody returned. She's that kind of person. So all my two brothers, she has lived with each one of us when we are children. None of us wanted her to go. No, absolutely. Am I right, Pastor Abby? Absolutely. Pastor Joshua knows her. All of them are some of the leaders. Absolutely at peace. I said, this is how mother in law should be. She's not going to single me out and be talking with me. She would rather talk with her. Yes. We, this entitlement mentality that is my son, is my brother. So I can come to my brother's house anytime. Is there a problem with calling your brother's wife and telling her? Even if all you want to do is just honor her. Oh, sister Lizzie, I'm coming to your house. She will even feel happy that maybe you know she will not go and ask us, but your brother said he's coming. Now, he didn't tell me, he told you. She feels honored. There is a wisdom around all these things. Please, I'm not ruling out the fact that some are troublemakers, but some can be handled by wisdom. Why the ones that wisdom cannot handle, God will handle. <laughs> because he said, I do know that all these things I said, they are with some people. He doesn't work with some other people. Some other people, there's nothing you tell them. They just want to come and that's one prayer we take care of. Yes, but things that you can do. The Lord told me 
I should share this message with you. Let there be peace in all because of that first Peter 3 7. The prayers of many people have been in that because you are not together in unity. Somebody believes in the family that the other person doesn't really care about your people. And when that perception is in the household, it will affect your family, it will affect your prayer life. You are asking God, hey, family wants to go into building project now. The Lord wants you to have but there's a law of the spirit that you cannot break. Somebody is not happy. And I told you that what you call thoughts or not, they are loudspeakers in heaven. Your thoughts or not are loud before God. So God is seeing many Christian families who knew that they have for money devotion, but somebody or the two people are not happy. When the heart becomes filled, when the family is filled with violence, angels will just stay back with their blessing. One day the Lord made me so that angels hear every conversation you make, you make in your house. When you tell your daughter that don't mind your dad and say things, the angels are hearing, you don't understand. In spiritual heaven's protocol, that kind of thing is not allowed. A man must not say to his children that don't mind your mom. You cannot blame your husband or your wife before your children. If you have to talk about something, you have to. It is a covenant. Marriage is covenant. God is very serious about covenants. I don't know whether you, you are hearing me. Yes, sir. If in a while you haven't seen your in-laws, be the first to suggest that, oh, let's go check your mom or you call. Send gifts, send love. And if you have forgotten, apologize and reach out. I believe that after this service, sometimes I say things here that you consider very simple. As soon as I get to my office there, from UK, everybody, I'm getting messages. There are too, there's too much violence in this area. Or many people will not understand what I've just said. It's, but many of you can understand because you belong to it. You see things happening every now and then. This one will not talk. This one will not talk to. This one will not talk to this. Today, as some people do wedding, they do a function and some family members will not come and they are in the same city. What is creating all these problems? Whereas when you are together, you walk in blessing. Yes. If a, a, a family member called me, you need to reach a CEO somewhere and I had access to the person. And I connected them, and that one gave them contract in millions. And this, me and this person, we haven't spoken in, we had not spoken in a long while before then. But it's the absolute peace. He just called. I said, It's like, Pastor, I think I've seen you at this point. Do you know this person? I said, Yes, I do. So I, well, we have been trying to write letters, and I said, Letter, don't, I said, don't worry about letter. I'm going to call the person right away. Almost all the things you need, they are connected. They are connected to people. And you see them every now and then. You just don't know. Who your cousin knows, who your nephew knows, who they are connected to, you don't know. And the enemy will see to you that you keep fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Young men here, if you have not dealt with selfishness, please leave marriage alone. It won't pay you. Amen. Hallelujah. Just know that you have to be up. So I have a way of always uh, thank God for uh, my wife. God bless her. <laughs> because sometimes say, what do I in chess also possible? I'll be like, I want to watch a match. I want to pray. But you know, when you get there, give them this gift on my behalf. Because personally, I hate to get out of my way. It's from home to office office, I am the most predictable person on that. Home to office, office to home, home to office. In my estate, there are colleagues from University of Ibadan who stay in my estate that I have not seen in the last one year. If I talk one of the Greeks, we talk on phone. Because at times, in the middle of the, I'm here till night. So what time do I have to check anybody? Yes. But the few ones she can attend, my family many of them are giving up on me in the sense that, that you are doing better, you are expecting me to be there, I'm not going to be there. But to send you a good gift, I will. My baby star, last one, is always saying that, you know, I don't even want you to come, just send money. <laughs> and I told one of them one day, I said, look, 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 let's be honest. Eh? You're angry, someone didn't come for you, but they come for you, they come for this, I said, let me tell you the truth. Your wedding, I will come for that, so important things I will come for. But your birthday, you are, maybe if you are 40, I can come, or you are 50, I can come, but some that you are doing for uh, 32. <laughs> that, that one. <laughs> so I said, let me ask you a question. That Choose. I like, see, money is good. 
When you have money to give, you can actually play with people. And that's okay, you know what? You are going to be 32, Abi. I plan to send 160,000 to you now. Which one do you want? My presence or the 160? <laughs> she laughed. She said, please, stay with your presence. <laughs> I beg, stay. I said, you see, life is that. I said, which one is important? If you are asking your uncle that, and he says that he cannot come for your wedding, and your uncle says that, you know what, okay, for not being able to come, I'm going to send you five million naira. Won't you be the one that will tell you your next function? That uncle, since I know you cannot come, just send. Because what is your presence doing? <laughs> if it's not with a gift. <laughs> You know, <laughs> the Bible says money has started all things. One, I'm, I'm, I'm done. A family member, I will, I will quote this way. They know the people I'm talking about. I remember that's very, very wealthy. And then a senior brother started complaining. I doesn't come, doesn't do that's very proud, doesn't come around. Senior brother wanted to do uh, maybe seventy or week birthday there or so. He said, If I see him. I will blast him. I will do this. He was talking. And some of the members only were there. So one of them went to tell that your brother is very angry with you. That he said that if he sees you, you will hear. He said, really? He said, no problem. I think he just sent 10 million. And uh, before coming. So the money arrived a day before his arrival. So when he, so now the family sat down like this. As he was packing his car with his protocol and PA and police. Everybody was waiting, ah, they will fix him today. That he will hear what today. The brother just got up from the midst of all of them. Went to meet him at the car. Full hug. Ah, good brother. <laughs> the red just put their hand on their head. So the devil now told them, ah, he sent me here yesterday. <laughs> you know, I would say he sent a man ahead of them. <laughs> you know, you can't be angry with the rich. <laughs> Hallelujah. As he turned back, the rest of so, so some of his, uh, the older ones were close to him. When they heard that the guy had given him 10 million, they were trying to turn to the head. So you love money like this. And so you were with all your mouth. See how you all give you. I don't can't talk. Just turn to one and say that if you were if if you were the one, if, if you were my shoe, what would you do? Ah, that one told his wife that not true. That uh, <laughs> somebody gives me 10 million. All offenses. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rise. <laughs> Hello, thank you for watching us. We don't want this to end without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You know, um, after listening to God's word like this and you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, it's an opportunity to come to him and it's a simple process because he has made all things available. I want to employ you now to give your heart to Christ. And by saying these words, because giving your heart to Christ must be done consciously, he has paid the price. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I believe that you died for me and that you rose again. I believe that you shed your blood for my justification. I accept your finished work right now, and I confess that you are the Lord of my life. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. If you have said those words, you are actually born again, a new creation in Christ. Join us for more of this. God bless you.